dear friends today we are going to discuss about the determining the position of centroid of built up sections consisting of rsjs flange plates and the plane figures having hollow portions in the earlier session we discussed about the determine the position of centroid of standard sections that is channel or jet section and unsymmetrical i section and in addition to that we are also solve the some of the problems regarding the hollow portion or wide portion in a few sessions back and we will also see the same problem today's session also and in the determination of the centroid of angle sections or l sections we are concluded that for equal angles cx is equal to cy for unequal angles cx is not equal to cy and it is also understood that for angle sections or l sections the centroid is generally outside the shape the centroid of channel section is also outside of the shape so generally it is located somewhere here right so it is the location of the centroid and with the inspection of the jet sections taking the their mirror images problems and we are understood that the centroid position is not going to be changed even though we are make its mirror image in today's session we are going to discuss about the determine the position of centroid of built up sections consisting of rsjs flange plates and plane figures having hollow portions in this particular session we are going to deal with the built up sections right and rsjs rsjs means roll steel joist roll steel joist is already we are discussed like roll steel sections in which i section r h section is known as the rsj so we will see that how to determine the same thing the rsj rolled steel joist a common type of i section beam is known as rolled steel joist is only made from mild steel but can also be formed from aluminum or other materials they are formed by hard rolling comma cold rolling or by extrusion that is 45000 has been its basic rate from the industries right so this is the figure is explaining about the i section or h section so when it is a vertical then it is a i section when it is a horizontal it will looks like a h section but i section and h sections are both are the same so it is made up of aluminum or mild steel or some many other material but whenever we say that steel it will be the steel mild steel and these are the market availability of the joists and their rates are given in this figure and their sizes is also mentioned here and how the length is available in the market the forms of roll steel sections we discussed in the earlier sessions that is angle sections channel sections and t sections i sections round bars we are seen and square bars are also we are discussed bars also discussed flat bars but in this session we are also discussing about the corrugated sheets 
expanded metal plates ribbed bars ribbed bars hysd ribbed bars mild steel and tmt bars welded wire fabrics are also be discussed in this session the rolled rounded bars are looking like this which are available in the market and rolled square bars are like this they can be rectangular shape also the corrugated sheets which are used for the roofing purposes are also manufactured the expanded metal which is used as a mesh or some other protective works it can also be used the rolled steel plates which are used for the make a built up sections along with the rsjs they have some specific width and their width is comparably comparably good enough along their length if their length is very less then uh, their width is very less then they call as flat bars and welded wire fabrics are also be used for the construction works these are the mild steel bars or plain bars we can say it is a plain bars you see here there is no corrugation there is no up and downs around the circumference of these bars hence these can be known as plain steel bars or mild steel bars if we have the corrugation on that we have the corrugation like this you can see that these are the corrugations we can be known it as a ribs in order to hold the concrete better bonding development this are be produced this is known as hysd bars and if the method of manufacturing has been some more made difference from the hysd bars then it is known as the tmt bars due to that change in the manufacturing process we are obtaining the core as a more flexible and the strength is enhanced so that is ductility nature is improved in the tmt bars so this is looking of the tmt bar structure how it will look like the mild steel flat bars is also available in the market with different sizes and lengths these are the sizes you can see that the width of the mild steel flat bar is very lesser when compared to the width of the plates okay. so these are the material grading and standards are available in the market coming to the today essential topic that is built up section built up section is made up by a fabricator from two or more pieces of material joined together with welding nails screws or glue to form a single solid section this is a compound section that means the fabricator means a manufacturer a manufacturer makes a combination of two or more pieces joined together with the welding or nails uh, to make a single solid section so you can produce a solid section with the combination of the two or more structural elements is known as the built up section in either ways those sections are known sections that means we know the areas and centroids then also it is known as built up section so generally built up section is made up of i sections channel sections and flange plates that means flat plates so here you can see that in this particular figure we have the t sections as a built up section and this is the one of the t section so this is the t section right the second t section is here the second t section is inverted t section this is the 
inverted T section. Right? So these two are screwed together to form a built up section. You can see this is the screws or bolts and nuts to make it is a combined structure. Then it become a, a built up section. Two T's are combined together to form a built up section. And similarly, you can see here, it is an I section. The figure is somewhere. This is an I section. This is an I section, which has been combined with the plates. You see in the bottom, it has the plate. It is the plate, right? And some another plate is also be placed here. So with the combination of the I section and plates, we have the built up section. So built up sections can be combination of anything. You can see that this is the I section and plate, right? And another I section. So we have the multiple options to frame the built up sections. You can also see here, the, these are the two channel sections. Here it is a channel, right? And another, this is the channel. These two channels are like this. They are placed back to back to give the appearance like this. So this is the portion we are viewing. So here is the two channel sections are placed back to back or web to web, right? And you can see this, this is the I section where it is, you are seeing this is an I section, right? It is attached to the plates. These are the plates, right? So this is the combination of the I section along with the plates. So with this, we are also producing the built up sections. From this session onwards, whenever we talk about the X bar, it is the CYY. It is the CYY. That means CYY means X bar. So this is the distance is nothing but X bar. So this is X bar. Right? If I talk about the Y bar, that means it is a CXX. So this is the Y bar. So from this point to this point, it is CXX or Y bar. So this is the nomenclature generally followed in IS code, IS code 808 and SP 6.1 codes, where the entire rolled steel sections of I section, channel section, angle sections, flat bars, square uh, rods and different uh, standard sections have been categorized and their areas, their flange widths and their web thicknesses and total depth. In addition to that, their centroids is also be mentioned in that particular IS code. Hence, if in the problem, if anybody says that ISMC like that, then you can refer the IS code book, IS 808 and SP 6.1 to get their properties to solve your problem given question. So we are going to deal the problem of the built up section. So determine the centroid of built up section with the following data. An ISWB 600 is placed below the rolled steel flange plate. So ISWB 600 is placed below the rolled steel flange plate. That means one flange plate is like this. One plate is like this. Below which below which the I section is placed, below which I section is placed. So this is the formation, right? So this one is plate, this one is plate, and this one is I section.
means I section. Hence, this can be drawn in the figure. The same thing has been drawn here. And the details of the ISWB section is also be given in this problem. This data of the area and width of the flange has been taken from the IS808 code and SP6.1 codes. And the plate width is itself given in the problem that is 1000 mm and thickness 10 mm. So with this data, the procedure will be same. Draw the sketch of the figure with the given dimension and inspect for the symmetry axis if any. So in this particular diagram, after drawing the details, you can observe by drawing the axis S. Is there any symmetry available? So in this one, you draw an axis. So is it symmetry? The below portion and the above portion is symmetry? No, this, this is not the symmetry. Now I am drawing the vertical axis that is parallel to y axis. Now parallel to y axis. Now it is a symmetry. Symmetry about the both the portions. Hence x bar can be obtained by using the LD by 2. So x bar can be obtained by using LD by 2. Therefore this is the x bar. So this is the inspection of the symmetrical axis. So with this in order to find the y bar you need to follow the procedure of analytical method because it doesn't have the symmetry about the x axis we need to the procedure to adapt to determine the centroid so that shapes are given i section so list the same thing its area which is given in the problem itself and its y distance so this is the origin this is the origin point to make it is in total into the first quadrant so we need to start from the y axis from this point onwards so that it will completely comes into the first quadrant therefore from this point the y1 is total depth of the I section by 2. So the total depth is 600 therefore total depth 600 by 2 because it is the origin. This is the only origin point. And for the top flange plate, this is the top flange plate. For this, the area is 1000 by 10 and the distance of the Y is taken from the references axis of the origin. So from this origin, 600 plus half of the its thickness. Therefore, 600 plus half of the its thickness is 605. Then obtain the product of the AY so that it gives the first moment of area and we summarize it and also summarize the area and substitute in the formula of the CY to get the y bar value it gives the 407.07 then show the same in the final conclusion of the figure so this is the centroid location to be shown in the structure coming to the second problem of the similar case Determine the centroid of built up section with the following data. An ISW 600 is placed in between the two rolled steel flange plates. So, he is mentioned that ISWB is placed in between the two rolled steel flange plates. So, yeah, I section is there, I section is there, which is placed in between 
సో ఇన్ బిట్వీన్ మీన్స్ మధ్యలో ఉందని అర్థం సో అబో దిస్ దెర్ ఈస్ అ ప్లేట్ అండ్ బిలో ఆల్సో దెర్ ఈస్ అ ప్లేట్ సో ద సేమ్ థింగ్ హ్యాస్ బిన్ షోన్ ఇన్ ద ఫిగర్ ఆల్సో అండ్ ఇన్ ఎడిషన్ టు దట్ దే ఆర్ గివెన్ ది డీటెయిల్స్ ఆఫ్ ఐఎస్డబ్ల్యూ సెక్షన్ ఏరియా అండ్ విడ్త్ ఆఫ్ ది ప్లేంజ్ ప్లేట్ అండ్ ద టాప్ ప్లేంజ్ ప్లేట్ డీటెయిల్స్ ఆర్ గివెన్ ఇట్స్ విత్ ఎయిట్ హండ్రెడ్ అండ్ థిక్నెస్ ట్వెల్వ్ ఎంఎం అండ్ బాటమ్ ప్లేంజ్ ప్లేట్ విత్ ఈస్ ట్వెల్వ్ హండ్రెడ్ ఎంఎం విత్ ఈస్ ట్వెల్వ్ హండ్రెడ్ ఎంఎం and thickness is 8 mm so this data is given this is the thickness 8 mm so this details have been given and asking to determine the centroid so procedure will be same after drawing the sketch inspect is there any symmetry axis is available or not so inspecting that about the x axis being the width of the bottom flange width is 1200 and the top flange width are 800 both are different and it is not symmetry about the x axis so it might be symmetry about the y axis parallel to y axis so draw the symmetrical axis passing through the web of the i section as it is symmetry about the y axis parallel to y axis hence the x bar is equal to ld by 2 what is the largest distance 800 and 1200 among which 1200 is the largest distance hence take the 1200 by 2 see this this is the 1200 by 2 therefore 600 is the your x bar keep at side and try to get solve the y bar in order to solve the y bar we required qy that means product of a into y first moment of area solve the analytical method procedure to obtain the y bar so here there are three portions that is a bottom flange plate i section and top flange plate so for all these three tablet their areas a1 a2 a3 and obtain the y1 y2 y3 y all with respect to the origin of the y axis that means this one so for the y1 take the half of the thickness of the flange plate and for the y2 it is not originated from the origin hence we need to add the thickness of the bottom flange width hence add the flange width and take the half of the i section depth 600 by 2 to get the y2 value and for the top flange plate which is also not originated from the y, y origin hence we need to take the all the heights of the flange and bottom flange and i section therefore add 8 and 600 and half of the thickness of the top flange width so take the half after obtaining the y1 y2 y3 then get the product of the area and the individual wise to get the first moment of the area then summarize the your areas and first moment of areas then solve for the y bar by substituting those values it will leads the 308.5 mm represent the same thing as a centroid now take the similar problem with the introduce of the channel section determine the centroid of 
built up section with the following data an isw b 600 is placed above the rolled steel flange plate and below the ismc such that the web of ismc coincides the top flange of the iswb iswb 600 area and flange of i section is given and the details of the plate is also be given and ismc is also be given details are given now first draw the sketch so he is saying that the isw 600 is placed above the rolled steel flange plate that means first it is the flange plate so there is a flange plate like this and above which we have the i section so we have the i section above the road rolled steel flange plate and the isw 600 is below the ismc that means ismc is above the ismc is above the your is iswb so this is the uh, figure they are wanted to and they are asking to determine the centroid so for this we need to see that is there any symmetrical axis are available if i draw the x axis here parallel to x axis is it the both the portions are symmetry no so this is not the symmetry hence i am trying for the y axis parallel to y axis is it symmetry yes it is symmetry about the both the axes right both the portions are symmetry about the parallel to y axis hence x bar can be taken from this point to this point is known as the x bar so x bar is equal to largest distance by 2 so this is the largest distance so from this point to this point is the largest distance that is 1200 therefore 1200 by 2 and after obtaining the symmetrical inspections then place the total figure into the first quadrant to evaluate the y bar by the analytical method so for the analytical method we are placing the entire object into the first quadrant then list the shapes bottom flange plate i section and channel section this is the channel section then calculate the individual areas of each section bottom flange plate is given 1200 by 8 and i section is itself given in the problem area and channel section area is also given in the problem itself after listing out the areas calculate the y1 y2 y3 with reference to the origin axis so this is the y1 for the flange plate bottom therefore 8 by 2 4 and for the i section the differences is origin from this point and from this point around 600 by 2 because it is the height of the i section depth of the i section so we need to calculate from this point hence we need to add 8 also therefore 8 plus 
600 by 2 308 similarly for the channel section which is located here now before going to the determination of the channel section the channel section is is given like this channel section is like this but in the is codes the channel section is not like this as per is uh, code the channel section will be the channel section will be this shape this is the shape of the channel section so in the problem they are given this cyy cyy i are also already mentioned that cyy means cyy means x bar cyy means x bar therefore this is the x bar so x bar is like this so this is the x bar so we know the distance of the x bar right but the channel has rotated like this so now the in the problem it is not the vertical it is the horizontal so for this it is the cyy or x bar now due to this turning this dimension will become this dimension will become as a y bar instead of the x bar it become a y bar it become a y bar right due to the rotation due to rotation right so this value of x bar in the vertical position has been converted into y bar in the horizontal rotation right so now we are understood that this value is already given in the problem so this value is already given in the problem as 24.2 right so that can be used for to get the y bar from this point to this point Right. So that eight six hundred plus given dimension twenty four point two. So I am again referring to the your problem. In this one, it is given C Y Y as twenty four point two. So C Y Y actually represents the vertical section, vertical channel section as X bar, but due to rotation. it will become as c x x and c it is a y bar so we are taking the same thing into the calculation right so after adding all the y bar distances for the channel section y3 and multiplying with the its area you are obtained the first moment of area ay similarly solve for the other moment of areas a a1y1 a2y2 a3y3 and summarize the all the values to get the solve for the cy now y bar is equal to cy of like this then solve by using the area and ay summarized values to get the y bar as 282.45 mm then represent the same thing into the centroid as a final figure so with this we are covered up to the built up sections used by i section and flange plates and channels and we can also frame the built up sections with the help of 
channels and plates the channel section a single channel section can be like this if i took another channel section i can make different shapes like i can make a box shape with the channel sections and i can made a built up section like this that means i can make a channel section by front to front so this is the this is known as front to front both the flange uh, channel sections are forming like a box shape right if i place the these channel sections into back to back this is known as back to back if i made both the webs are together then it is known as back to back so i can arrange the channel sections in any manner so that i can obtain the better resistibility and having the better strength so in addition to the this back to back position i can also label the plates to get the more area to distribute the loads so this type of arrangement can is possible with the channel sections and arrangement of the flange plates at the top and bottom is also possible it increases the more area and better strength for the moments while loading so do practice with this arrangement at your home by taking the values from the is 808 with this we are moving to the second topic that is finding the centroid for plane figures with hollow areas so in the hollow areas that means that area is void that is empty area where is the hollow means empty areas so hence these areas are to be subtracted from the existing areas of the basic shapes so the same procedure has been already discussed in the earlier sessions also however we are also solving the one more problem of the same in this problem we are asking about the determine the centroid of the given figure where circle and small rectangle areas are hollow so this circle this circle is hollow this circle is hollow and this rectangle is also hollow this rectangle is also hollow hence these both the areas are to be deducted from the existing basic shapes what are the basic shapes are existed here one is the big rectangle 120 by 100 this is the big rectangle and another rectangle which is laid top 80 by 100 is also one of the rectangle which has been divided 80 by 100 and another area is semi circular area so semi circular area so there are three basic shapes are available one is semi circle second one is 80 by 100 rectangle 120 by 100 rectangle now what are the hollow areas which are to be deducted that is the circle dia 60 and small rectangle 50 by 30 so these two are to be deducted from the existing basic shapes now let the start the process with the analytical method being it is a composite section we are divided it into the different basic shapes 
so rectangular bottom 100 by 120 so you know that also the figure is like this this is the rectangle bottom and with also rectangular top is also there and in addition to that we have the semicircular shape and we have this circle also here it is a some circle some this portion and in between we have a rectangle so this is the shape of the structure now the bottom rectangle that means this is the bottom rectangle this is the bottom rectangle right this bottom rectangle area is 100 by 120 so its x distance is from this point this is 100 by 2 right so 100 by 2 and for the y from this point it is 120 by 2 so the same thing has been taken here and for the circular hollow section right we will come uh, do this after the rectangular top so this is the rectangular top so this is the second this is the top one rectangle top this is the top so this dimension is 100 by 80 that is the area and its x is the same thing 100 by 2 because it is the same distance from this x axis 100 by 2 and y bar it is taken from the origin o so this is the origin point therefore 120 plus and 80 by 2 so this is 80 therefore 120 plus 80 by 2 now coming to the semicircle so here also 100 by 2 because the dia is equal to the 100 so we are taking it as a 100 by 2 right and for the semicircle the distance is taken from the origin for the y axis so this is 120 up to this is 120 and from this it is 80 and 4r by 3 pi is the centroid of the semicircle hence add those all things 120 plus 80 plus 4r by 3 pi for obtain the y bar now again look at the our basic figure to get the idea of to get the idea of the detected areas right so this has been the figure so these missing details we have to calculate and it is looking like a symmetry also if you are thoroughly seen that are understood that this is the symmetry about the x axis also so we can also get the x bar directly without calculating the x1 x2 x3 x4 like that you can also directly get the x bar value however we are solving for the both here right now coming to the your circular hollow which is a hollow portion and so the, its area is negative the circle is dia 60 and pi d square by 4 which has been negative detected the same thing and the area is calculated then the distance of x1 x1 has been taken from the origin that is this point and we are drawing some point here like this so this is the distance you know that dia is 60 the dia is 60 and this total distance is 100 100 minus 60 it is you can see from this figure so what is the distance from this point to this point from this point to this point what is the distance 
being it is 100 100 minus 60 40 this 40 has been divided in the both the areas here hence this is 20 and this is also 20 so this distance is 20 correct right? similarly what is the distance here for the rectangle so this is 100 and this one is 50 therefore 100 minus 50 50 50 has been divided into these two portions hence 50 by 2 this is 25 this is 25 right so what is the distance of this one so this is 120 total 120 minus 30 120 minus 30 90 90 by two portions this is the both the portions are available here therefore 90 by 2 hence this is 45 right so similarly you need to calculate like these all the portions so what is the distance from this point to this point this is 80 this is total is 80 80 minus 60 by 2 because it is the radius we required therefore 60 by 2 therefore 30 80 minus 30 so this is 50 so this is the calculations we required now for the circle point of view 20 and 50 are the required for the rectangular point of view 25 and 45 are the requirement so I substituted the same values here while calculating the x and y therefore for the circle 20 is taken here Right, for the uh, y axis 120 plus 80 because circle is coincidence with the circle is coincidence with the top rectangular top height hence this centroid is from the here only hence y has been taken 80 and 120 therefore this is the 120 plus 80 and similarly for the rectangular hollow the x bar we are already seen that 25 is the missing dimension and its width is 50 therefore 50 by 2 and for the y axis it is at a height of 45 we are calculated that missing detail and the height of the small rectangle is 30 therefore 30 by 2 so after obtaining these values get the summation of the areas that is 19,599 and the A1, X1, A2, X2, A3, X3, A4, X4 and A5, X5 their products and their summation then it will gives you 97 like this and similarly A1, Y1, A2, Y2 all those right so to obtain the values after obtain the first moment of area substitute the values in the x bar qx by a or ax by a then it is gives the 15 i already said that it is symmetrical about the it is symmetrical about the parallel to y axis hence x bar is easy to get the ld by 2 it is get the ld by 2 so the same thing has been represented as for your reference and y bar is calculated from the values obtained from the tabulation therefore it is 122.92 the same has been represented in this as a centroid So this is how the hollow areas has been solved for determination of the centroid. Today in this session we discussed about the what is rolled steel joist, what is the flat bars and flat plates, different types of the rolled steel sections and definition of the built up section and we are also seeing the how the built up sections can be formed with the channel sections and I sections flat plates and we are also determined the position of centroid for the built up sections and plane figures having hollow portions thank you